plant responses. You know, as plants are living things, they exhibit that characteristic of life response. Plant growth is influenced by both external and internal factors. So plants respond to certain external factors which will in turn have an influence on the internal factors. Four external factors on your course, day length, temperature, sunlight and gravity. Tropisms describe how plants respond to certain stimuli. You must be able to define a tropism as a change in the growth of a plant in response to a stimulus. Growth regulators are chemicals produced in plants that affect plant growth. It's important to note that plant growth regulators can have a number of different effects. It depends on their concentration, where they're acting in the plant and the presence of other growth regulators. These plant growth regulators can be categorised as being either growth promoters or growth inhibitors. Growth promoters cause cell elongation so they stimulate growth. For example, auxins, that family of growth regulators, would be considered growth promoters. Auxins are produced in meristems. Meristems are plant tissues capable of giving rise to new cells by mitosis. You would generally find meristems at the root tips and the shoot tips. And these two areas are known as the apical meristems. But keep in mind that auxins are produced in developing fruit and in young leaves too. Make sure you can identify where auxins are produced in this diagram of a root. They are produced in that zone of cell production. Growth inhibitors slow down growth or prevent growth. Abscisic acid is one growth inhibitor and it's produced in many areas in the plant. The leaves would be one example. Ethene is another example of a growth inhibitor. So that growth inhibitor, ethene, is very unusual because it's in gas form. So let's run through very quickly some specific tropisms. The way in which plants respond to the stimulus of light is known as phototropism. So to give the proper definition, it's the change in the growth of a plant in response to light. The shoots will grow towards the light so they're positively phototropic. And this is really good because it ensures the plant will have the best chance of photosynthesizing. The next tropism is geotropism. It's how a plant will respond to gravity, defined as the change in a plant's growth in response to gravity. The roots are positively geotropic because they grow towards gravity. This is excellent for plant anchorage. It's also very important because it ensures the plant will be able to absorb all the water and nutrients it needs from the soil. The next tropism is hydrotropism. The change in a plant's growth in response to water, and you know the roots are positively hydrotropic, they grow towards water. Another tropism is thigmotropism. So it's the change in a plant's growth in response to touch. So think of ivy growing up a tree. Another example of a tropism is chemotropism. How does a plant change its growth in response to chemicals? In plant reproduction, the pollen tube grows in response to chemicals produced by the ovule. So we have to do a little bit more work on those growth promoters, auxins. IAA, or indole acetic acid, is one of the most well-known of all the auxins. And you know that auxins are produced at the meristems, particularly the apical meristems, the root tips and the shoot tips, but also found in developing fruit and in young leaves. Auxins have many roles. One of them is to control tropisms, those growth responses. Auxins are responsible for apical dominance. This is where the auxin produced at the apical meristem, so the tip of the plant, prevents side branching. The auxins produced at the apical meristems are preventing or inhibiting the growth of the axillary buds or the lateral buds. By removing the apical bud, you remove the site of auxin production and this can result in a low bushy plant because side branching is no longer inhibited. So if you look at this diagram here, you can see the picture on the left is a very tall, lean plant with not many side branches. It's because that apical bud is still in place producing those auxins. However, the picture on the right has that apical bud removed and side branching is no longer inhibited and it's developing nice side branches. It's thought that auxins are transported downwards through the plant in vascular tissue, in particular phloem. Phototropism, how a plant changes its growth in response to light, is controlled by an auxin, indole acetic acid, otherwise referred to as IAA. When there's light coming from one particular direction, a plant will bend to grow in that direction, the direction of the light. This is because the auxins produced in the apical meristems, the tips of the plants, diffuse downwards. 
If there is unilateral light, so light coming in from one particular side, the oxins are going to diffuse more down the shady side, the side furthest away from the light. So light is coming in from one particular direction and the auxins, the IAA, produced at the tip of the plant is going to diffuse more down the shady part of the stem. This causes those cells to elongate more and results in the plant growing or bending towards the light. Auxins have many uses, for example spraying flowers with auxins is a way of producing seedless fruit. This is known as parthenocarpy. The effect auxins have on plants depends on the concentration and where they're acting. For example, high auxin concentration will stimulate shoot growth, but it has the absolute opposite effect on roots. High auxin concentration inhibits or prevents root growth. And low auxin concentration will inhibit stem growth, but stimulates root growth. So you also have to know a little bit more detail about growth inhibitors. So one very common growth inhibitor is abscisic acid. And we said before, it slows growth. Abscisic acid in seeds is responsible for maintaining their dormancy and preventing their germination. Abscisic acid is key to helping plants survive drought conditions because it causes the stomata to close. And you know stomatal closing is all to do with those guard cells. The other growth inhibitor, which is found as a gas, is ethene. Ethene is a growth inhibitor and it's responsible for leaf fall, among other things. It's also responsible for ripening fruit. Ethene will also stimulate the production of more ethene. And so this is how you can have a chain reaction of ripening, how many fruit suddenly over a period of a few days suddenly all ripen. For your exams, you must be able to give some examples of commercially prepared plant growth regulators. Ethene is used to commercially ripen fruit. Oxins are used in the micropropagation of plants, which is a form of tissue culturing where a group of undifferentiated cells are treated with different concentrations of oxins and this will stimulate shoot growth and root growth. Another example are rooting powders, which are used to stimulate the production of roots from plant cuttings, for example, naphtal acetic acid. Plants also exhibit anatomical adaptations. Many have thorns, for example, to prevent them being eaten. Trees have thick bark. And this acts as a physical barrier against the entry of pathogens. Leaves have a waxy cuticle layer. This is very important to prevent against the plant losing too much water. Also, the stomata are able to close over to conserve water, which is another adaptation. Plants also have chemical adaptations to assist in their survival. For example, in adverse conditions such as high temperature, plants will produce these heat shock proteins. These heat shock proteins will wrap around plant enzymes, protecting their globular shape and preventing their denaturation. Plants also have some chemical adaptations to help them fight against pathogenic attack. Many plants can produce these phytoalexins. Phytoalexins are often like cowboys. They stimulate the production of specialised cell walls in infected cells in the plant, preventing the pathogen or the disease from spreading elsewhere. The fenced off infected cells are then destroyed. Some phytoalexins can actually damage the cell walls of invading pathogens. You're often asked to compare plant growth regulators with human hormones. One comparison is that plant growth regulators and hormones are both made in one place and transported elsewhere where they have their effect. Both are slow, so basically they take a long time to get to their intended destination where they need to get to. Plant growth regulators and hormones are both chemical in nature. That was Plant Responses. The very best of luck with your revision and your exams. Make sure you're doing past papers, checking the marking schemes and always listen to your teacher. The very best of luck.